shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. God is keeping track of every lie. There is no escape. Proverbs 9. Every lie, Proverbs 19:5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Proverbs 19:5. Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from York Juggler 66 Hour of the Truth. Today on the 9th of September 2018 we are gathered here together to have the 10th session of the long series Was Peter Ever in Rome and all the other titles that you can give to it like Simon Peter vs. Simon Magus or Simon Peter Meets the Competition or Simon Magus is the real first Pope, and so on, and so on, whatever you want to title it, the point is that we are taking away the pillars of the Roman Catholic Church with their false teaching that the Apostle Peter was in Rome and was the very first Pope. I have a little bit support here today, I hope at least, because I got two sleepy beasts invited to my broadcast. <laughs> The one in Germany who is quite tired and the other one in America who is quite tired. I'm the only one who's getting awake, so let's see how much we hear from oh, the yeah. guys. That's right. <laughs> and I'm just kidding a little bit. You have to give me that uh, to have a little bit of a joke here in Please the beginning. Do. Anyway, uh, first I want to speak to Michael uh, because otherwise he really falls asleep over the microphone and welcome him very much to the broadcast in Germany. Hello, Michael. Good morning. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, afternoon over there, Michael. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, thanks for thanks for reminding yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> but so, so, soon the sun goes down and then it's uh, night all over again. Then ah, it's night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wonderful yeah. to have you, Michael. And of course, on the other side of the ocean, we welcome. Uh, well, no, not this picture. This picture, we welcome Brother Brett from Minnesota. Oh, thank you. Yes, wonderful to be here as well. And uh, <laughs> ready to get right into it. Let's go. Yeah, we get all fired up, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. In interesting thing, though. So to start with uh, this broadcast today, as I guys told you, of course, in advance, and I'm going to start with this. Uh, during this last week, uh, the past week, because today is Sunday, this is the first day of the next week, but during last week, um, Steve Mc, Stephen McQueen from Even at the Doors uploaded another, another video, a great of work, a, a great part of his new project, um, that was entitled, uh, or still is entitled, The Origin of Nations. Now, you remember, of course, that in the beginning of this series, um, we did a video very first that the idea, just to get back a little bit, to get you up to part, um, the very first idea to make these video series was not only for me that I listened to Tom Fress reading the book of Ernest L. Martin some years ago and I wanted to do that by myself, but also that when we read the book uh, Code Word Babylon, Michael, Brett and me together, um, that there was a dispute at one moment because uh, P.D. Stewart actually t uh, was dealing with First Peter 5.13 and uh, explaining that uh, the Apostle Peter was in Babylon and Babylon he took for Rome. And uh, therefore we did a video refuting that uh, meaning and uh, I think Brett uploaded that on his channel up to now already. You can look that up there. Uh, Simon Peter was not in Rome or what is the title, Brett? Do you have the name in, uh, in your mind right now? Do you remember that? Oh uh, yeah, I think that's the oh boy. Saint I'm Peter sorry. never was in Rome or something like that, right? Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> I don't have that in front of me right now. I could look it up. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's ju it's just for our listeners that they you know they can jump to your channel and have sure. a look at that, because I don't sure. have that uploaded yet on my channel. Maybe when this that's one comes right. up, it is already uploaded. I don't know. 
Uh, English right. videos don't go that fast because uh, my English public is not so keen on watching my videos, so I have to leave them on for many days to just get a few hundred views. Anyway, uh, the point is that at that time we refuted um, P.D. Stewart in his book Cold World Babylon about Peter being in Rome and Rome being that Babylon that the Bible speaks about. Now, we made a very good point of that, but I think it is always interesting to have more sources than just one source to understand this very eminent point because this is one of the basic pillars of the Roman Catholic Church and the point cannot be made often enough very thoroughly by us Protestants, Bible-believing King James Version, Bible-believing Christians, that the Roman Catholic Church has it wrong. And if you didn't believe us in the foregoing broadcasts, in the preceding broadcasts of this one, of which, which, which one, this is the tense one, including this 24 paper I did before and now the fifth reading of the book of Ernest L. Martin. If you didn't believe the ones uh, or the, the, the facts that we stated in the video of uh, Peter was never in Rome, I'm going to play to you a little part of that video from um, Behind the Door, The Origin of Nations, which is, I, as I told you, a two-hour video. Um, this is the video right here and uh, it will lead up to it. We are, I'm going to start at 1 minute 56.16 and it's going for to, to play for about a minute and a half. And I'm just letting the author and the facts that he presents speak for itself. Listen very carefully. The Assyrians did have at one time a powerful supremacy over the Orient. But, like the people of the Sudan and Bulgaria, that power in early days no longer exists. But their intricate, highly skilled and colossus artwork still dominates the Near East and section in different museums all over the world. The men and women had long black hair, olive light brown skin and earrings like the Sudanese and their phenotype has not changed over the years. This Assyrian man with his long hair and beard, features have still been preserved in this 19th century Assyrian Nasorian preacher, Prince Nuri Archdeacon of Babylon. This is the bust of a woman's head, a rarity in Assyrian art. But if you look at her distinct eyes, nose fold and her lips, this Assyrian Christian girl refugee has the exact facial features and phenotype of her early forebears. And despite their high levels of cruelty in torture and beheading in the ancient world, the Assyrians became one of the earliest church communities in the world. The church which is at Babylon, according to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 13. That's the point. The Assyrians became the very first church in the world. And that is exactly, as we just saw here, what Peter addressed in 1 Peter 5.13. Yeah? As you can see, the church which is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. So here we have again proof from another uh, source, and from a very well researched source, I might add, uh, of this um, Adrian, not Steve McQueen, I'm sorry, Adrian McQueen, who runs the channel even at the doors, in his investigation on the origin of nations, which I can absolutely advise you to watch from the beginning to the end, and this is one of many videos in this um, series to come, to understand that when the Bible speaks at this moment from the church which is at Babylon, that confirms by Adrian McQueen in this video, and that affirms the leading up to that the Assyrians became the first church over there, that we are speaking of the real Babylon, of the Babylon in the East, and not of the Babylon which is Rome also called. So do not get confused. And I wanted to make this point very, very clear, because it is important, as I always say, to do your own research. And here you have it from somebody else. I am not affiliated with Adrian McQueen in any way. I have never had an email exchange or even comment exchange with him because he never answers to the comments that you put on this video. I mean, you can look how many comments are here 
he never <laughs> answers to all these videos, you know? Yeah. I've never had contact with that guy. I just watched this video and I was quite tired yesterday night when I watched it. But I was at one minute, one hour, 54 minutes or something. And then all of a sudden it hit me like a sledgehammer. When we came to 157.30 and I said, wow, thank you. Now this is the working of the Holy Spirit to confirm what we have said in our videos numerous times that this is confirmed from a complete other source and with a very well researcher, a very well respected researcher like Adrian McQueen on the other hand. So that's why I wanted to start our video today with this fact right here. Maybe Brett has some comment on that. I just heard you do a noise there? Oh, no? Yeah, well, I uh, I watched part of that video last night, and uh, it's typical with with uh, Adrian McQueen's videos that they just go by so fast, and I don't know, I gotta be in the right frame of mind to watch it, so I'll have to watch it again. I only made it halfway through, and I just, I need to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, the point, the point that you are picking up, uh, Brett, is absolutely correct. Adrian McQueen is a fast narrator and he has a very special as you of course li uh, heard in this little part that we, I was playing him um, he has a very uh, own accent uh, kind of a Scottish accent if I'm not mistaken very English oh, it's you wonderful know. wonderful content don't get me wrong absolutely just absolutely but you have to concentrate content. very hard to yes. understand him that's the point it's tough and it's when you tough. watch a video like him at I don't know 11 p.m. at night or at midnight around midnight and you are getting a little bit tired I can advise you better pause and watch another day because yeah, these videos right. are information filled, information packed, packed, and and you don't get the essence out of it when you listen only halfway to it. And I I have to uh, agree a hundred percent with Brett. You have to watch his videos two or ma maybe even three times yeah, to get through true. it. Yeah, so true. It's it's sometimes like with Tom Fress. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, I didn't listen to the Global Vatican three times because I love it so much, but because yeah. you really have to pay attention to every little word that Tom is reading in that book. You really have to get it out. You have to soak it in. You have to suck it in. And you cannot do that when you are a little bit tired or distracted in the way of thinking because you're doing next to that maybe answering an email or typing a comment on YouTube or or doing something else, uh, even not stirring your coffee or whatever. You have to pay attention. And to do that for in a video like Adrian McQueen uploaded here for two hours, well, <laughs> that's a lot of attention, right? It is. <laughs> so... But, Brett, isn't it wonderful that we discovered this just this week where we are going again into the reading of this book and that we see from a completely different source a 100% correct confirmation of our understanding of the Bible with him leading up with the Assyrians to the fact that Peter was greeting the church in the real Babylon? It's incredible because, you know, the, the fact of the matter is our recorded history, what we have access to, is really the only part of reality I, I can keep track of. I mean, people talk about a an ancient earth being thousands or millions of years old. You know, those are the people we should consider having a tinfoil hat. I'm serious. <laughs> That's it's true. a young earth. It's not that old. And our history is not going back that far. And, uh, you know, you can argue all you want on this, but it's a fact. It's a fact, yeah. So, it always throws people, especially people that have put a lot into science, you know. Uh, so-called science, Brett. Yeah, so-called science. Science, so-called. What, what was that uh, chapter called in Cold Word Babylon? Science, so-called, right? Uh, science acquired through the assistance of the devil, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, we, we just have to make a little bit advertisement for people to watch Cold Word Babylon because the numbers on, that, on the viewing of those video series are just ridiculous as much on your channel as are on mine. For, yeah. for that revealing work that P.D. Stewart did in that book and our almost, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 sessions to get through the 525 pages, man, all these scoffers who come to our channel and say this is not true and this is not true, 
they should really read these books that we are reading or read them along with us and study that for themselves and of course uh, study the Bible in the first place. Yeah, it's a sad one. Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, God is using this to prove his point, though, too, Yerk, that uh, there really aren't very many who even care. Well, that's true. So I don't even look at the numbers anymore. I just I'm thankful to be doing the research and to put the videos out and and you know people can think whatever they want of me. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. You're right. It doesn't we, matter. We should be satisfied with plowing the ground, sowing the seeds, and give God yeah. the increase. That's right. That's really what it's all about. And yeah. that's you know I think uh, that's what I've learned. And uh, this whole idea, you know, we've had a contact with Alan Lamont in the past. And, you know, right away with him, he, he was like, Brett, your video counts are so low, you know. It's like, is that all you think about, Alan? Come on, man. <laughs> I know his were, like, astronomically high. But, of course, he was coming at it from a different angle, you know. and, a and Futurist uh, angle, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So... There we go. I mean, you know, I never really understood futurism until I ran into your videos, Yerk, with Tom Press. And wow, I mean, it's just such a huge blessing. Yeah, and that's the reason why we're going to continue in this reading of Simon Peter Meets the Competition, of course. Because that has all to do about futurism. That has all to do with linking the papacy not to the Antichrist, according to the Roman Catholic teaching, and according to our real biblical historicist Bible teaching, to link the Antichrist only to the Roman Catholic Church and no one else. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael, do you have uh, some, re some, some remarks in the regard that we were just speaking about, or shall I start our reading here? Yeah, just uh, I'd like to mention that I find it very um, very cool that there are sources outside um, our small YouTube accounts which uh, prove that uh, Peter wasn't in Rome but in Babylon actually. So I think that helps when people are coming from another belief system or maybe even are atheists or so. I appreciate it. Yeah, a very good point because some people need more um proof than just the Bible. And when they get proof, like from us and our videos, the ones that you upload on your channel, Brett uploads on his channel and I upload on my channels, that for them is not enough. They want more uh, temporal, temporal proof. And with Adrian McQueen now, and even at the doors, with this little excerpt of his video, The Origin of Nations, they got just that. Nice point, Michael. I agree 100% with you here. Okay, mm -hmm. so without any further ado, let us go and read Peter was not the first pope, because last time we stopped in this part of the book on, pay, on the bottom of page 13. Next, the author says, we will see how Simon Magus became later confused with Simon Peter and how he cleverly brought into quote-unquote Christianity the mystery religions of Babylon. Peter was not the first pope. This is the title of the first part of the book that we are reading today and that was why I stumbled upon this video from Adrian McQueen, The Origin of Nations, because this confirms that Peter was not the first pope, that he was not in the Babylon which is also Rome, when we remember Revelation 17 where of course it speaks of Rome as Babylon and the whore, but that the Bible in 1 Peter 5.13 was speaking of the Babylon in the East what we today call Iraq, in the time where the Assyrians le lived, the point that Adrian McQueen made so wonderfully in his video. So, Peter was not in Rome. Here, the author says, are ten, not one, not three, not five, but ten, like commandments, solid biblical proofs, that the Apostle Peter was not at Rome. Mark each point in your Bible and understand them well, so you will not be deceived. The primacy of the Roman Catholic Church depends upon the fundamental doctrine, on this one fundamental doctrine, the claim that Peter was the first bishop of Rome 
and the founder of the Roman Church. And like the uh, fake Isidorian decretals and like the donation of Constantine, this is a lie and we are going to uncover this lie today. The teaching of Catholic historians tells us that Simon Peter went to Rome at the same time as Simon Magus in order to thwart his evils. This was during the reign of the Emperor Claudius. After successfully combating the Magus, they tell us Peter assumed the Roman bishopric and uh, Peter assumed the Roman bishopric and ruled it until the Neronian persecutions of 68 AD. Yeah? Nero, who lighted Rome with fire and blamed the Christians for it, during which Peter was supposed to have been crucified upside down on Vatican Hill. Now this is the basic story and Catholic writers never shirk in attempting to defend it. Some of them say that this general account is one of the most uh, provable of historical events. But is it? Well, let's have a look here. We have a picture here that you can see. This is maybe interesting and uh, I have to look up another one. I know that there is one with Peter being um, crucified upside down and we just have to look at that and I'm going to I want to take that picture also uh, into this video, maybe later on, because this is this picture then is based on the same fable, of course. I just have to look where this is here. You see there are many pictures. It's not so easy to find this, just this one. <laughs> um, let's see. There's the disputation. That's the one that we have here. I hope I didn't throw that picture away. Ah, here, this is it. This is the picture I wanted to show you too. So, um, here you see Simon Magus flying in the air. And, oh no, that's the one that we have already, right? Yeah. That's this yeah, one. Oh. Fine. <laughs> uh, where is the other one? Um, where is the other one? And crucifixion of Peter, here it is. So, I'm sorry. Ah. Sometimes. Okay, let's just put this a little bit bigger later on. Here we have Simon Magus sitting on the throne. And here we have, quote unquote, uh, the Apostle Peter being crucified upside down. This is the other picture I wanted to show you. So let's keep that for a later moment. Let's just keep for this at this moment because we just read that Quote unquote, Peter assumed the Roman bishopric and ruled it until the Neronian persecutions. No, it says after successfully combating the Magus. And this is what this picture is all about. This is from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, that's in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Called the Met uh, in, in short terms, if I'm not mistaken. And this is according to the legend in order to prove to the people of Rome that his powers were greater than Peter's the magician Simon lifted, elevated himself up into the air. And here is Peter then on the ground praying to the God of the Bible, according to the legend, that is, to throw this Simon Magus out of the air, down to the ground, and to show him which power is greater, the power of his demons or the power of the God of the Bible. But this is all according to a legend. Very important that we understand this. But this is what the author is speaking about after successfully combating the Magus because he threw him out of the air. Yeah, That's this picture then. <coughs> and then we go of course to the other one that I had here before. Uh, okay, let's take this one. After successfully combating the Magus, they tell us Peter assumed the bishopric of Rome. So after he flew up and he said, no, I, I have the real power, blah, blah, blah. Until the Neronian persecutions in 68 AD, during which Peter was supposed to have been crucified upside down on Vatican Hill. Now, anyway, but is it, the author says, and then he continues, the fact remains, many ecclesiastical authors of the second century, Justin Martyr among them, uh, Remember, Justin Martyr among them. Give information completely negating Peter's supposed Roman bishopric. 
This is admitted by virtually all scholars, except conservatives, conservative Catholics, as you can read in the Encyclopedia Biblica in column 4554. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That is a conservative Catholics. <laughs> conservative Catholics, yeah. Today we call yeah. them Tridentine, right? The Catholics sure. that uphold the dogma of the Council, uh, Council of Trent. Yeah. But the author says, more important than this, the records of the true Church of God, the writings of the New Testament, absolutely refute the Roman Catholic claim. This is a sentence that we should actually put in color, that we should highlight a little bit. Uh, it has to jump into the eye right away. So I'm going to give it a nice green color that we can see it. The writings of the New Testament, the writings of the Bible, the Word of God, the approved Word of God in the 1611 King James Bible, absolutely refute the Roman Catholic claim. It is time that the world gets its eyes open to the truth of this matter, the truth which is clearly revealed in the Word of God. The Apostle Peter was never the Bishop of Rome. Comment. Please. In my humble opinion, the crucifixion in reverse is fake. Sure. Be be yeah. <laughs> because, um, first of all, it's uh, in contradiction to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So it's a perversion of the evil side, let me uh, say so. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore I think it's a sign that the Roman Catholic Church uses it as a reference that her Peter um, yeah, is the, is, is the Antichrist, it's just a small reference, but uh, in, j there's another proof, as you may say, so. if you do the crucifixion sign when you are speaking the Lord's Prayer in the Roman Catholic Church, mm -hmm. it's also your your crucifixion, which which you do with your with your hand, with your right hand, is also a, a, a cross with the top uh, below. With the top down, yeah. With the top down, yeah. That's right, because you start at your at the top of your forehead, you yeah. take the hand down to your chest, and yeah. then you go to the left, and then you go to the right, mm -hmm. and that means the cross is upside down. Yes, absolutely <laughs> correct. Wow, I never thought of that. Yep. Yeah, came, uh, millions of Catholics never thought of that either, Brett. <laughs> I'm sure they probably don't. <laughs> and that, isn't that interesting? Because in that that little uh, that little nook they got at uh, in, in that Vatican there, and you go down underneath, isn't there like an altar with the upside down cross under there somewhere? I know I've seen video of that. Well, I know that I have a, a, a picture of the Pope uh, sitting on a throne with an upside-down cross uh, yeah, that too. behind oh, him, yeah. carved I've in the chair itself. Yes, I mean that's that's a very impo that's a very uh, very it's famous picture of a uh, satanic reference. I think it's it is John Paul reference. II, right? Yeah, yeah, that it is. Be, yeah. Uh, oh. It is. But the thing that's is, it, it's just a perversion. perversion. It's the other way around. Yep. Yeah, uh, like it like it should be like it was used to be and so i think it's a it's, it's quite a good reference uh, for anyone who got uh, eyes to see that the roman catholic church does any anything in reverse so they put their tradition their babylonian tradition atop of jesus christ absolutely <clears throat> do you the guys roman did you guys ever see this campaign video from the United States here of uh, Barack Obama's campaign back in 2007, 2008. In that campaign slogan he had, Yes, We Can. And if you play that backwards, what it says? Something with Satan, I think. Yeah, thank you, Satan. Yeah, if like you play, Yes, We Can, if you just take a recorder and say, Yes, We Can, play it backwards, it says, Thank you, Satan. Did oh, yeah. you know that? Well, I, I probably I heard that before, but I yeah. didn't remember that clearly as you stated right now. So. Yeah, so they use that crap, you know? It's it's weird. It's just really strange. And um, 
I don't know, you know, and the music too, right? With uh, <clears throat> Alistair Crowley teaching and all that. Uh, I can't find the picture right now here of this Pope sitting in that chair. Uh, I got so many pictures that I sometimes do not know what is the right search word for, for the right picture. So. Oh, that's okay. I'm pretty sure most people that watch our videos know what we're talking about because it was a, it was a picture of Pope John Paul II with some, some patriarch or somebody high up, you know, in this hierarchy, in their, their supposed hierarchy. It's all bull crap, but, you know, this uh, church hierarchy they have, uh, there was somebody, you know, with a gold turban on or something, and they were embracing, and, and you could see, you know, this stone. It was like a gray stone or concrete um, throne with an upside-down cross. Yeah. On the top. Well, it was like a concrete chair where he sat on. Yeah, yeah concrete on. chair. That's, yeah, that's, it's that's really right. strange looking. Yeah, really kind strange. Of, kind of beige in the, clear, in the color, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's continue. The Bible teaching. So what does the Bible say? Not what does the Roman Catholic Church say. What does the Bible say? Because we are still getting to 10 points that the author wants to make where he proves without any shadow of a doubt that the Apostle Peter never was in Rome in Italy. There are ten major New Testament proofs which completely disprove the claim that Peter was in Rome from the time of Claudius until Nero. These biblical points speak for themselves and any one of them is sufficient. So you don't even need all ten because any one point of them is sufficient to prove the ridiculousness of the Catholic claim. Notice what God tells us. The truth is conclusive. And now, before I even continue, I want to do something. I want to do something that I actually wanted to do in the beginning of the video. But as always, I um, have a mind like a siphon, and I don't think of everything anymore when I when I do this video. So, my point is that if you are watching this video and you have not studied your Bible and you do not know that the Antichrist is. <coughs> the Roman Catholic Church, his Pope, yeah, that the Pope, the papacy, the office of the papacy is the biblical, historical and prophetic antichrist, then you don't need even to watch this video. Because this is all about proving this one point over and over and over again. Like you don't need to read Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Gretton Guinness if you don't believe that the papacy is the Antichrist. Because that book is full of proof with that. But if you don't believe it, you can be presented as much proof as anyone wants to present to you. Present to you. You don't believe it anyway. Then, you know, take your business elsewhere. Go to Alex Jones. Go to, I don't know... <laughs> Yeah. all these other deceiving channels on YouTube or wherever and do your research over there if you don't understand that the papacy and only the papacy is the biblical, historical and prophetic antichrist then all that we say here, all what we read here every comment we make, every word we read of any book whatsoever is futile to you because you don't have the biblical understanding and you first have to get at least open to that understanding and then follow these readings to get confirmation of what the Bible actually tells you. Brett, you yeah, wanted to make a comment there. That's so true and, and it really does you a, a lot of good if you pay attention to you know, if you are deceived by someone, if someone has lied to you and you don't like that very much, you want to find out, well, well, why? Why is this person lying to me? What are they what are they actually getting to? What's the real point? So maybe maybe there are those of you out there, those skeptics out there that have uh, read part of Romanism in the Reformation, and you're still wondering why is the papacy the Antichrist? You know, I want more proof. Then you definitely should get that book. And uh, we have multiple sources of readings. Uh, Tom Fress has read it several times. Um, we're uh, totally encouraging people to take another look at this 
entire church structure, the World Council of Churches, the ecumenical movement, the bigger picture, that that's what we're trying to say. Look at the bigger picture and why are things not adding up? Well, it's not simple. That's the point. It's very detailed and it takes a lot of study and it takes a lot of time and you're going to rack your brain and you're going to get really upset, but that's the way it is. You want to know the truth? You got to pay the price. You got to study. It is not presented to you on a silver platter. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not. Nope, nope, nope. You got to work for it. And I think Michael is one to um, confirm everything that you just said, because Michael, not so long ago, uh, took upon him the work to listen to all the 11 recordings that I did some time ago, uh, partially with Tom Fress as a guest, uh, on... Um, characteristics of antichrist you know mm -hmm. i have this whole uh, mm -hmm. playlist on my youtube channel um, which fills videos. 11 videos which fill about 25 hours of making 26 points biblical points like we are going to this book with 10 points 26 biblical points to prove without the shadow of a doubt through the history that we have today in 2018 to look back at to prove that the papacy is the biblical, historical, and prophetic antichrist. Right, Michael? You watched all that, right? Yes, correct. And that's one of the reasons I get so less sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That can happen too, can it? <laughs> But well, tell us, or tell our listeners, our viewers of the video, what was your experience of that? Because, you know, I find it quite strange that this video series of L, uh, of 11 videos, even though they are packed with m uh, mass information, 25 hours of uh, watching or listening to the videos, and they have only been viewed, I don't think, even more than 5,000 times, all 11 videos together. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can come up with a little conclusion. Maybe you want to do a little conclusion on that and, and tell us about the experience you had while you were listening to those uh, during your work time and, and every time, every minute that you could spare the last weeks to listen to these broadcasts. Maybe you could share a little bit with us on, on that, Michael. Yes, uh, of course, because I always look for the basics to start first. And I found this subject very interesting because the characteristics of the Antichrist uh, was filled with uh, so much information and historical facts that I found it very uh, good to, to have this knowledge to get into any arguments uh, with these people who are claiming that there is no Antichrist or there was any Antichrist or there will be a future Antichrist but that 26 characteristics of the Antichrist does fit only to the, to the papal seat to the papacy is more than a coincidence because the the probability that all these characteristics will fit uh, to to another state or state religion or any human being or whatsoever uh, is about zero so oh. you you got so much information and so much proof in it that i found it very fascinating and it's so much basic information that i think it, it needs to needs to, to, to spread out because so many people will not will be convinced for this. So I think it's very, very basic information and I found it uh, very informative and very precious to have this information. Also the in-depth analysis of Tom Fress um, that uh, did uh, fascinate me very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you for your input here, Michael. As you can see in this playlist, Uh, 1 hour 50, 2 hours 250, 210, 220, 210, 250, uh, 115, 203, 120, and uh, 130, the last about estimated hours. I think with 11 videos that brings up uh, surely above uh, 20 hours of watching these 11 parts. And um, uh, this is a video series that I started, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in 2014 somewhere. I don't know if that's the time of the uploading of the video, but here you can see the very first part. It was still under the uh, 
under the time at, uh, in the moment and uh, when I was working together with Michael Adams in nothing but the truth and you see the very first video is uploaded the 28th of February 2015 but this is only because we had to redo part one after all the other parts because of a falling out with uh, Michael Adams and some other people and we did a redo with this with um, Tom Fress in, in this very first part and he wasn't in the other very first part or he was there and Michael Luckham was also there and uh, we don't appreciate that person anymore. Anyway, um, that was just a little excursion into you know the characteristics of the Antichrist and as Michael just said, okay, he took the time on him and he, he wanted to really um, measure uh, what happened in history to what the Bible said and, and that's what this reading was all about in this uh, 11 part, video part. So if you don't believe that the papacy is the Antichrist then you don't have anything to do on this channel except for you don't believe that the papacy is the Antichrist but you are open in your mind to a understanding that the Bible wants to give you and when you open your mind for the for the Holy Spirit to indwell you and to lead you into all truth as Jesus Christ promised us he would do, then you are very much welcome here and you will understand that the papacy and only the papacy is the Antichrist of the Bible, not a future one like the futurist deception of Francisco Rabira teaches and not a past one like the preterist teaching of Louis de Alcazar teaches. Okay? And then we can go on with the video we are reading here, or we are doing here today because we are telling you based on the 1611 King James Bible that the truth is conclusive the Bible is conclusive okay we go to proof one we should consider Christ's commission to Peter now this is often very embarrassing to Catholics because Christ commissioned Peter to become chief minister to the circumcised not to uncircumcised Gentiles. Quote from Galatians chapter 2 verses 7 through 8. The gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me taught the Gentiles. This is Paul speaking, of course. Here we have it, in the clearest of language. It was Paul not Peter, who was commissioned to be the chief apostle to the Gentiles. And who was it that wrote the epistle to the Romans? <laughs> it wasn't Peter, but it was Paul. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, quote, And when James, Cephas, speaking of Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace, meaning the gift or office, of apostleship, that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, the Gentiles, and they unto the circumcision, the circumcised Jews." Unquote. Now Paul further mentioned his special office as the Gentile apostle in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11, quote, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. This is Paul speaking. Yeah? Paul, a teacher to the Gentiles. I think there is not much doubt that you can have here on the Word of God. Of course, only if you do not believe the, uh, uh, the Word of God. No. Um, let's put this in green here. Um, so, ah, this computer sometimes makes me crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on. You're doing a good job, Jörg. We I'm really trying appreciate to. what you do. You oh, know? why doesn't he take this, put this in color here? So, come on, Mark. No. <laughs> Very really. cool. This is, <laughs> this is the essence that we should get from the Bible. Paul says whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Not Peter, but Paul. Peter is nowhere called the apostle to the Gentiles. This precludes him from going to Rome to become the head of a Gentile community. Now, 
approved too. Paul specifically told the Gentile Romans that he, Paul, had been chosen to be their apostle and not Peter. Quote from Romans chapter 15 verse 16. I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Unquote. How clear! Paul had the direct charge from Christ in this matter. He even further relates in Romans chapter 15 verse 18 that it was Christ who had chosen him to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Okay, let's read Romans chapter 15 verse 18. Romans chapter 15 and then we go to verse 18 where it reads for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Okay? Quite clear, if you ask me. Now, let's change the picture here. Uh, which one shall we use? Uh, let's take this one. The crucifixion upside down, this fable of the Roman Catholic Church. You know, I got many fables of the Roman Catholic Church. I even read a poem on the Roman Catholic fable from the book Babylon Mystery Religion. That's a wonderful thing on the transubstantiation. You will laugh your eyes off when you yeah. hear me reading that one. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're familiar with that, right? I'm sure I've heard that. Yeah, that's a really good series you have yeah. up. About the about the Protestant wife that was married to a Roman Catholic guy, and he yeah. uh, invited a Roman Catholic priest into the house, and uh, to convince the woman of the transubstantiation myth, the next time when he came back, she offered him the bread and the wine and said, uh, "Well, since you changed it <laughs> according to your hocus pocus transubstantiation, just to make the story short." I added a little bit arsenic into the batter. But since you change it, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> okay. That's a wonderful one. You can find that on my channel, Roman Catholic Fable. Yeah. Right. Again, to come back to the subject at hand, Paul established only true church at Rome. He was the one who established the only one true Christian church, the true apostolic Christian church in Rome. Proof three. We are told by Paul himself that it was he, and not Peter, who was going to officially found the Roman Church. Quote, I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, till the end ye may be established. As we can read in Romans chapter 1, verse 11. Isn't this amazing? The Church at Rome had not been established officially even by 55 or 56 AD. However, the Catholics would have us believe that Peter had done this some ten years before, in the reigns of Claudius. What nonsense, if you understand the Bible. Of course, you understand that neither Peter nor Paul established the Catholic Church. But these proofs are given to illustrate that it is utterly impossible for Peter to have been in any way associated with any church at Rome. Proof 4. We find Paul not only wanting to establish the church at Rome, but he emphatically tells us that his policy was never to build upon another man's foundation. Quote from Romans chapter 15 verse 20, Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Unquote. If Peter had founded the Roman Church some ten years before this statement, this represents a real affront to Peter. This statement alone is proof that Peter had never been in Rome before this time to found any church. The point is even much stronger. If that would not be true, what Paul states here, if that, sorry, correct grammar, if that were not true, then Paul would be a liar. And Paul was the apostle brought in by Jesus Christ himself, so that would make Jesus Christ a liar. 
So, when you think Jesus Christ is a liar, well, then you go, please, into the Roman Catholic Church, because then you have very good company. You even have the best company you can ever imagine, because they all think that Jesus Christ was a liar. They all think that Jesus even was not the Christ, as Antichrist John Paul II said some years ago, while he was still living, when he said, Jesus Christ did not come as the Messiah, but he came to show the Christ in all of us. Do you think Paul was a liar? Then the one who established him as an apostle must have been a liar too, right? Then you call Jesus Christ a liar. Now if I was you, I would be very prudent with statements like that. If Peter had founded the Roman Church some ten years before this statement, this represents a real affront to Peter. This statement alone is proof that Peter had never been in Rome before this time to found any church, or you call the Bible a liar. Peter not in Rome. We turn to proof 5. Then we have always already the half of the ten points that we are going through work through. At the end of Paul's epistle to the Romans, he greets no fewer than 28 different individuals, but never mentions Peter once. See Romans 16. Read the whole chapter. Okay, I have no trouble doing that. Let's go to Romans chapter 16. Yep. This is a Bible study. Yeah? This is to prove biblically by the only preserved true word of God, the 1611 living King James Bible, that Peter was never in Rome. And we are going to go through some very important names because you can see here already in verse 3, greet Priscilla and Aquia, my helpers in Christ. We met them already earlier in the book of Acts. They were the ones that established the, Rome, the Roman Christian church, not Peter. But anyway, let me just, without any comment, to come to the conclusion of the broadcast today, read to you Romans chapter 16, and then leave you with your own studies and with the reflection on what you have heard and listened, uh, what you have heard and watched in this video. I command unto you, Phoebe, your, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is in Cancria, that ye receive her in the Lord, as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquia, my helpers, in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinatus, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are, of no, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute your bane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodion, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Nereus and his sister Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet would I have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my workfellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And that concludes our reading today of Simon Peter versus Simon Magus. Simon Peter meets the competition. And we have already read five of the ten proofs that Peter was not in Rome. And we are going to continue next time. But I want to leave the closing remarks first of all to Michael and then to Brett. Please. Yeah, thank you for the lecture of today. It was, as always, very informative. And I keep uh, my head up for the upcoming events which uh, will take place uh, next uh, Sabbath I think yeah I can, nothing more to say here because um, I'm just um, inserting all the proof that I can argue with these who don't know it good okay Brett some closing remarks from your side Sure. Thanks again, Jörg, for the study today. And it's uh, always good to get back into the Bible and get get into the Scripture and start to consider all things. All things are working for the glory of Christ, ultimately. And uh, sometimes it uh, requires that we, you know, get out of the way. <laughs> Because uh, that uh, old ego of ours come, comes and creeps in once in a while. And, and what did the Lord tell us to do is die to self daily. So, in we that... Have, we'll, yeah, we have to set our self aside. That's it. That's right. And yes, we have, and we have to relearn, Brett, to humble ourselves again. Yep. How many people who are watching this video can honestly say that they know how to humble themselves, especially in the world that we are living in? Because this world teaches us the quite opposite of humbling. It tells us to make ourselves bigger and greater than our neighbor. Not to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, but to compete with our neighbor. And if you don't believe that, well then go back to chapter 23, of rulers of evil and read the comparison of the teaching of this world into the teaching of the Bible and you will get what I'm talking about. I have to humble myself daily as Brett does, as Michael does and they always say well thank you for the broadcast, thank you for the reading, thank you for this, thank you for that. No, I thank the Holy Ghost for that, that he makes it even possible for us three to be connected via Skype to sit here and do this reading together. I maybe take may be taking the major part of this, but I don't take any credit for this. The Holy Ghost should, give, should be given credit for that by every one of you. Don't thank me, thank the Lord for His grace. That's the only reason why we are here and why we can even do this study today. It is by the grace of God 
and to him we have to give the increase. Maranatha. They are corrupt, they have done a bomb.